Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On podcast series, Macbeth. Episode 5, Round About the Cauldron Go. For the best listening experience, be sure to use your headphones or earbuds. And don't forget to wash your hands. Praise to whom on purple heath when moon is full we see Macbeth. He carries secrets in his veins. Let's pierce his skin and stroke his pains. <gasps> Tis time! Tis time. Toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Round about the cauldron go, in the poison entra throw. Told that under cold stone, days and nights as thirty-one. Oozing venom, sleeping gut, boil the first in the charmed pot. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Fillet of a forest snake, in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of newt and toe of frog, whirl of bat and tongue of dog. Adder's brook and blindworm sting, lizard's legs and owlet's wing. For a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Tail of dragon, tooth of wolf, witch's mummy, craw and gulf, of the glutted salty shark, root of hemlock, dug in the dark, liver of blasphemer too, gall of goat and slips of you, slithered in the moon's eclipse, heathen's nose and liar's lips. Finger of birth strangled maid, ditch delivered by a jade. Make the gruel thick with gore. Add there to a tiger's organ for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double toil and trouble. Fire burning cauldron bubble. Double, double toil and trouble. Fire burning cauldron bubble. Cool it with a babylon's blood. Then the charm is firm and good. <laughs> <laughs> Commend your pains, and everyone shall share the gains. And now, about the cauldron sing, like elves and fairies in a ring, and chanting all that you put in. Sisters, gather round the Wants us now to tell <laughs> a story of which she glories, fun by faith, and also glory.
near. Show him all, and he'll soon fall. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, whoever knocks. <laughs> Oh no, you secret black and midnight hags. What did you do? A deed without a name. I entreat you to use all you profess, however you come to know it, answer me. Though you untie the winds and let them fight against the churches, though the foamy waves confound and swallow up all ships that sail, though new corn you crush and trees blow down, then castles topple on their keepers' heads. Though palaces and pyramids do bend their heads to their foundations. Though the treasure of nature's life sources tumble so completely as to sicken destruction. Answer me all of what I ask you. Speak. Demand. We'll answer. Say if thou'st rather hear it from our mouths or, or from, from our master. master. Call him. Let me see him. Pour in Sal's blood that hath eaten her nine piglets. Torn flesh taken from the murder's gallows. Throw into the flame. Come high or low, thyself and duty doth thee show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Beware Macduff, beware the fame of life. Dismiss me, enough. Whatever thou art. For thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast guessed my fear, all right. But one word He more. will not be commanded. He is another. More potent than the first. Macbeth? Macbeth? Macbeth! Had I three ears, I'd hear thee. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. For none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make assurance double sure, and make a bond with fate. He shall not live. So I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises like the offspring of a king, and wears upon his baby brow the round, gold crown of sovereignty? Listen, but speak not to it. Be lion meddled, proud, and take no care who chafes, who frets, or where conspirers are. Macbeth shall not defeated be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall rise against him. That will never be. Who can enlist the forest? Bid the tree unfix his earthbound root. Sweet omens, good. Rebellious dead, rise never till the wood of Burnham rise, and our high place to Macbeth shall live life's natural course. Lose his breath to time and mortal custom, yet my heart throbs to no one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much, shall Banquo's offspring ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know. Why sinks that cauldron? What noise is this? Here's your show. Show his eyes and breathe his heart. Come like shadows so depart. He ate kings. They're your friend. Why stands he at the end? Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down, thy crown doth sear mine eyeballs, and thy hair, another gold-bound brow, so like the first. A third is like the former. Fill the hags. Why do you show me this? A fourth, burn eyes. What? Will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet a seventh. I'll see no more. And yet the eighth appears who holds a glass which shows me many more. And some I see carry Scotland's orbs and the scepters of Wales. Horrible sight. Now I see it is true. For the blood blackened Banquo smiles at me and points at them as his. What? 
this is so. I, sir, all this is so. But why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? Come, sisters, cheer me up as sprites and show the best of our delights. I'll charm the air to give a sound while you perform your frantic round. Let this great king may kindly say our duties gave him welcome pay. <laughs> Where are they? Gone? <laughs> Let this malignant hour stand so accursed in the calendar. You without. Come in. What's your grace's will? Saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. <laughs> Infected be the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of horse. Who was that came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word. Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my good lord. <sighs> Time. Thou anticipates my dread exploits. The racing purpose never is undertook unless the deed follows close. From this moment, the very firstlings in my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand. Even now, I must crown my thoughts with acts. As soon as thought, it's done. The castle of Macduff, I will surprise, seize upon Fife, give the edge of the sword to his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace his family line. No boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose cool. Visions be gone. Where are these gentlemen? Come, bring me where they are. Honored Ross, what did my husband do to make him fly? You must have patience, Lady Macduff. He had none. His flight was madness. Though our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was Macduff's wisdom or his fear. <laughs> wisdom! To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion and his titles in a place from whence himself does fly? He loves us not. He lacks nature's warmth. Even the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight against the owl for young ones in her nest. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little is his wisdom, where his flight so runs against all reason. My dearest cousin, I pray you calm yourself. <laughs> Keep faith. Your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the ways of the world. I dare not speak much further. But cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. Believing rumors based on what we fear, yet know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea, lurching side to side. I take my leave, cuz. Shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease, or else climb upward to what they were before. <laughs> my young Macduff, blessing upon you. Fathered he is, and yet he's fatherless. I am so much a fool, should I stay longer. Tears would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. Young man, your father's dead. What will you do now? How will you live? As birds do, mother. What? With worms and flies. With what I get, I mean, and so do they. Poor bird. Thou have never feared the net nor lime, the set trap nor the snare. Why should I, mother? Poor birds are never hunted. My father is not dead, whatever you say. Yes, he is dead. What wilt thou do for a father? Nay, what will you do for a husband? <laughs> Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Then you'll buy him to sell again. <laughs> thou speaks with all thy wit, and yet in faith with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye. That he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so. Every one that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. 
And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Every one. Who must hang them? Who? The honest men. Then the liars and swearers are fools, for there are enough liars and swears to beat the honest men and hang them first. Now, God help thee, poor monkey. <laughs> oh, but what wilt thou do for a father? <laughs> If he were dead, you'd weep for him. If he were not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. <gasps> Poor prattler, how thou talks. Bless you, fair dame. I am not to you known, though of your state of honor I well know. I fear some danger does approach you nearly. Well, what do you if you will, if you will take a simple man's advice, be not found here. Flee with your little ones. To fright you thus, methinks I am too savage. To not warn you thus were worse cruelty when tis so near upon you. Heaven preserve you. I dare remain no longer. Oh, where then should I fly? I have done no harm. But I remember now I am in this earthly world, where to do harm is often laudable. To do good sometimes accounted dangerous folly. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say I have done no harm? What are these men? Where is your husband? <laughs> I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou may find him. He's a traitor. Thou liest, thou shag-haired villain! What? You egg! Young fry of treachery! Ha! Ah! He has killed me, mother! <laughs> Run away, I pray you! The Play On podcast series, Macbeth, was translated into modern English verse by Migdalia Cruz and directed by Edward Torres. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Catherine Eaton. Sound design, mix engineering, and original music composition by David Molina. Sound engineer, Daniel Ben Shimon. Executive Producer, Michael Goodfriend. Senior Producer, Miriam Lauba. Managing Producer, Robert Cappadona. Coordinating Producer, Taylor Bailey. Casting by the Telsey Office, Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. The cast is as follows. Armando Riesco as Macbeth. Sabrina Guevara as Lady Macbeth. Chinaza Uche as Macduff. Jordan Barbour as Banquo. Bernard White as Duncan. Daniel Jose Molina as Malcolm. Flor Delis Perez as Lady Macduff. Barzan Akavan as Ross and the Porter. Annie Hank as Lennox. Elijah Goodfriend as Macduff's son, featuring Manila Luzon, Monet Exchange, and Miss Peppermint as the witches. Also featuring David Watson on the bagpipes. Voice and text coach, Rebecca Clark Carey. Equipment and recording engineer, Tommy Freed. Sound effects assistant, Ben Welty. Production Assistant, Benjamin Goodfriend. The Senior Manager of Business Operations and Partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On Podcast Series, Macbeth, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit playonpodcasts.com for more about the Play On podcast series, visit playonshakespeare.org 
for more about Play on Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play on Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at playonpodcasts.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And don't forget to wash your hands. <laughs>